What's up everyone? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi and welcome to my new tutorial series on how to get started with Warhammer 40k. This series is going to go through all of the steps that you need to take to get started playing 40k and eventually culminate in a tutorial on how you can get started installing and playing Warhammer 40k on Tabletop Simulator and making use of all the incredible tools that Tabletop Simulator has available for you. In this video, we're going to start small just by talking about how you create an army in Warhammer 40k. And I'm going to teach you how to use the Battle Scribe application, which is an incredible community created tool that makes list building in Warhammer 40k absolutely a breeze. One of the most daunting things in 40k is building lists. So let's talk about exactly how you go about it. Today, I'm going to talk about list building from this perspective of points, not power level. Power level is an alternate balancing system that kind of simplifies and streamlines things, but doesn't account for a lot of models, war gear, or special abilities, and therefore tends to lead to less balanced games. I'm going to start by covering the rules around building lists, including talking about detachments and detachment abilities, and then we're going to move on to using Battlescribe and the tools that Battlescribe has to build your lists, and then we're going to go through building one. So first off, I'm in this incredible resource here where you can find all of the rules of Warhammer 40k in one easy place. This is wahapedia.ru. You can visit it at wahapedia.ru. I'll put a link down in the description. It makes referencing 40k's rules super easy. If you want to access any of the rules that we're talking about in this video, specifically around building lists, you can go to the advanced rules section, and you can find all of these rules rules in the Battleforged Armies and Detachment section. Now, an army in 40k is made up of one or more detachments. Detachments are a collection of units that are organized into slots called battlefield roles. Those roles being HQ, troops, elites, fast attack, flyers, heavy support, fortifications, dedicated transports, and Lords of War. Now, when you go to build your list, you have to start by selecting what detachment you're going to build it from. Depending on the size of your game, you can, if you want to, build your list out of multiple detachments. This will give you access to more slots that you can fit units of different battlefield roles into, depending on the composition that you're trying to create. The downside is that each detachment you include costs you a resource called command points. Some detachments will refund your command points situationally, depending on how you build your list. And generally speaking, if you're just starting with 40k, you should start by building an army around either a patrol, battalion, or brigade detachment. Since these will refund the command points you spend on them, 90% of armies in competitive 40k are built either off of a patrol detachment or a battalion detachment. So we can see here, if we were to select a patrol detachment to build our army, we would spend 2 CP to start off with. Now, if our warlord is part of the detachment, which we'll cover later in the video, I would then refund those 2 CP. And doing so unlocks these units for my army that I can include. Most detachments have a certain minimum requirement that you have to meet in order to legally field the detachment. So, for example, this patrol requires me to have at least one HQ in the detachment and two troops units. Now, adding units not only fills up your battlefield roll slot, but also costs you points. Games of Warhammer 40k are usually played at a specific points level, typically either 500, 1,000, or 2,000 points. Units in 40k, such as these long fangs that we're looking at right now from the Space Wolves Codex, normally have a minimum number of models that are included in the unit. These long fangs in particular must include at least four long fang models as well as one long fang pack leader. They also often will have a wide selection of wear gear options. This is especially true of Space Marine models like these long fangs. So once you know what unit you want to add to your detachment and how big it is and what weapons it has, you can find out how many points it costs by going to the back of your codex and finding the unit entry there. So we can see the same unit of long fangs cost 18 points a model. It has a minimum unit size of five models, which means it's going to cost you at least 90 points. Then you'll add the points for the weapons the units are equipped with down here. Essentially, every unit in the game has a baseline equipment loadout that they come with as standard, which is not included on this list because those war gear options are free and baked into the base cost of the unit. So any additional war gear that replaces that then adds its point values as shown. This is a little confusing so far, I imagine, and the Battlescribe application I spoke about earlier makes it a lot easier to keep track of. So let's move on to that, and I'm going to talk about installing Battlescribe so we can get started building tons and tons of Warhammer 40k lists. So as a quick rundown, Battlescribe is an incredible army creation system that was created and is maintained by members of the community that put a ton of blood, sweat, and tears into making sure that we can create armies quickly and easily. To download it, just visit battlescribe.net, and on most mobile 
mobile devices, you can find it in their app store as well. Most of the tools on the app are going to be almost identical to the ones I talk about here uh, for the desktop version. Just go to the download section and download the correct version of Battlescribe. It'll open up as an exe file that you'll then run and follow the setup instructions just like you would any other application. Now, once you open Battlescribe, you basically just get this big blank page. What you're gonna wanna do is download the specific data files for the game you're trying to play. And in this case, 9th edition Warhammer 40K. Now, I already have it installed here, but in order to install it yourself, just click Add Data, and you'll find a list of the most commonly downloaded data files. If we scroll down to the Ws here, you'll find Warhammer 40,000 right there. Just click the checkbox, click Done, and it will download automatically into your Battlescribe repository. Now, one thing that you should do is check in and update this data periodically, especially after new releases, usually a week or so after a new codex or new series of FAQs come out. The Battlescribe community will get on it and update those directly onto your system so you don't have to worry about any points changes whatsoever. To do that, just click the Update Data button here and click OK, and it will reinstall all of your repositories. Boom, data files successfully updated. Now we want to create a new army. So to do that, we're going to go up to the corner here and click on this create a new roster button. That will open up this edit forces page for a new roster. If you're playing points or power level, you can set the points value that you have to spend. Or if you want to be a little bit more flexible, you can leave it as negative one, which will give, essentially give you infinite points. Then just build up to whatever points limit you're trying to create. Now, in order to create the army, we're going to have to add forces. This is Battlescribe's way of adding detachments to your army. And by clicking on that, we can see that we can select a detachment from basically any faction in the game. We were just talking about Space Wolves, so let's build a Space Wolves army today. So I'll click on Space Wolves, then I can click on the type of detachment I want to... Now, generally speaking, battalion detachments are where you're going to start your army, so we're going to click on that real quick, and then click OK. That will add that to our roster. Now, this adds a detachment of the selected force, and as a default in Battlescribe, you can only add units of that faction to that detachment. Although, the way that detachments work in Warhammer 40k, if they share a keyword with units from a different faction, you actually can include units from both in the same detachment. Generally speaking, almost every faction in the game has special bonuses if you build the detachment out of only models from that faction. And some armies, like Space Wolves and like Space Marines in general, have additional abilities that are unlocked as long as your entire army belongs either to the Adeptus Astartes faction or the Space Wolves faction. If you're brand new to 40k, I would probably recommend stay sticking with a single faction for right now. And I don't think I would recommend adding multiple factions into a single detachment, since the bonuses you lose during the game usually aren't worth the added flexibility. So it's really only worthwhile if you have a very specific combo in mind. Mixed detachments or mixed armies like this are often referred to as soup, since it's basically like adding a bunch of different ingredients all together into a single list, just like a soup is. If you want to soup up a single detachment, you can do so by clicking on the detachment that you'd like to add additional factions to, and then click Add Force again. You can see that you, you can now only select that one battalion detachment, but you can add any other faction of the same faction keyword. So I could, if I wanted to, add Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard to my, to my Space Wolves detachment. I could add Inquisition models. I could add Grey Knights. Like I said, I don't recommend doing this, but if you want to, that is how you go about it. So now we've added our battalion detachment. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that's going to bring us to the roster creation section. So now here on the left hand side, we can see our selection of all of the units in our picked faction that we could potentially add to our battalion. Now, it's going to be a long list because we're playing with a Space Marine faction and they typically have a ton of individual and unique profiles. So we have a, we have a lot to pick from. But we can see that they're separated out by battlefield role. Uh, some factions will have some additional four sorg slots that are special. For example, most Imperium factions can bring agents of the Imperium, which are assassins and inquisitors and things like that, which don't take up a force organization slot. And those are going to be listed up here at the top. Now, to get started, a couple things that we're going to have to do as sort of housekeeping is specify the chapter that uh, is specify the sub faction we want to be. In this case, we want to be Space Wolves, but because we are Space Marines, we could have selected a successor chapter, which gives us different different abilities. But we'll just be Space Wolves for now. We also want to make sure we track our CP correctly. So we're going to add command points depending on our battle size. And you can see here, if you use any pregame stratagems, you can list those here and that will automatically subtract from your CP total. Now, building a battalion detachment, we do have the requirements of taking at least two HQ choices and three troops choices. 500 points is a little low for a battalion, so I'm actually going to kick it up to 1,000 here for an incursion which will give us six CP to spend instead. Now to add units to our army, we just click the plus sign next to the unit we want to add. And we can see, here we go. We've added a chaplain. 
And now we have some required selections to make. You can see that Battle Scribe will tell us up at the top here if there are any upgrade selections that you have to include on him. So in this case, we have to determine what weapons he's armed with. I guess we'll give him a bolt pistol as well as his Crozius Arcanum, which he comes with automatically, which we can see is listed here. And then we also have to determine what litanies he has. We'll, we'll give him a Catechism of Fire for plus one to wound with ranged attacks targeting the closest eligible target. Space Wolf Captains are pretty cool, so let's add a Captain as well. Here's a standard Space Marine Captain. We can click the drop-down menu here to see the uh, uh, war gear that he's equipped with as standard, and it looks like we will have to choose an additional weapon option for him. Let's go ahead and give him a big ol' Thunder Hammer. In some situations, you're going to be able to equip multiple of the same piece of war gear. So in this case, instead of just being a checkbox, we could actually potentially give him two Thunder Hammers if we really wanted to, but I don't think we will. <laughs> Let's also give him a jump pack, and and to be a classic Smash Captain, I think he's going to need to have a Storm Shield. Now, unfortunately, he also has his Mastercrafted Bolt Gun selected here, so we're going to have to deselect that in order for this error to go away. Now we have our Legal, Captain, and Chaplain selections. That is the two HQ choices that are, we are required to have in our battalion, so now we are move on to some other selections. And essentially, we're just going to do the same thing for all of our other picks. Boom, there we go. 1995 points, just uh, nicely under 1,000, and we have a legal list. Now, we are getting a couple errors from Battlescribe here, so if you want to see any issues with your list, you can just click on it. And the one thing that we haven't done yet is select our Warlord. So Warlord selection is an important part of Warhammer 40k, and something that you do after you've spent all of your points and you've added all of the units that you want with their war gear to your army roster. As soon as you've done that, you can pick any model from your army to be your warlord. Now, typically, you're going to want it to be a character model, so probably either our captain or our chaplain. But depending on the codex you're playing with in the faction, this will then give you a selection of warlord traits and relics that you unlock that you can then add to your army to customize it. Typically, for almost every faction in the game, your warlord will have to have the warlord trait. So in this case, let's make our captain really hard-hitting. We will make him the warlord by clicking the checkbox here. Then we'll have to select a Warlord trait for him. Let's go ahead and give him the Hunter Warlord trait, which allows him to advance and charge and fall back and charge at plus one. Now, what else this does is unlock one Relic selection for us. And while our Warlord will almost always have to have our Warlord trait, the Relic will just go to an eligible model, typically a character from the same faction as the Warlord. This is a little Codex dependent, so just definitely read the Relic section in your Codex, and that'll tell you who can, who can take your Relic. But most of the time, it's just someone in the same faction. So we'll go ahead and use the relic uh, selection here to give him a relic. Let's go ahead and give him the armor of rust. That's a good one. Makes enemies fight last when uh, he's engaging them. Now from here, most factions can then spend command points to add additional relics or warlord traits from their list. The one that your warlord gets and the first relic you add are usually free, but any additional ones will often spend uh, command points. And some factions will have stratagems you use at this point to gain additional bonuses. So here we have it. We have no errors up in the top here. We have our full list fully created and ready to go. Now all we need to do is save it. So we'll just click the orange save button right up here and we can add it to our selection. 1K Space Wolves. Battlescribe makes building lists in 40K super easy. As you can see, it's kind of a process. Choosing all of the individual war gear options in each of your units and making sure that it follows all of the rules is kind of convoluted. So having a system that just lays it all out very nicely and neatly is really nice. Now, if you want to share this list around and especially submit it to an event, if you're playing in a tournament or something like that, you can use the share button right here. Oftentimes, the best way to share it is to use the chat function. If you click on this, it will automatically copy it to your clipboard. From there, if you want to just send it to people, you can paste it into a chat box or something like that, or you can use an application application like Pastebin, which allows you to just paste large amounts of text down and send it to people. Paste your army in. You can see it. It's all laid out there very nicely with all of your upgrades and things like that. And then you can go ahead and share it to people. I know people who share lists in Discord, typically Discord has a character limit and being able to put things into a paste bin and send them directly to other people is uh, pretty is pretty useful. Now, last but certainly not least, the last benefit that Battlescribe has is that it breaks down all of your data sheets for you. So it can give you a quick reference guide for all your rules. Now, I will give you a heads up. Battlescribe is not a very good resource for rules reference beyond just printing it out to use as a very quick 
reference. It doesn't really have access to stratagems or special rules besides the ones that you use at the list creation step. And because it is community created, a lot of times there are some inconsistencies and some errors in there. So Battlescribe is not really a substitute for a real rulebook or errata document, but it can give you a good reference. So to view it, you can click this view the roster button right here and you can configure how you want to see it. But in this view, we're basically going to take a look at all of the data sheets of, it, of the, all of the units in our codex. So we can see our captain right here and here are all of his special rules and it has all of his weapon profiles in here as well. Now you could just go ahead and print this out right here if you want to have a quick reference for your list during your games or you can save it as a PDF so you can share it around as well. This is super useful, especially if you are uh, going to be traveling around with your army and don't want to have to flip through your codex all the time to see what your weapons do. So there we have it. That is a crash course on how to build a list in Warhammer 40k and how to use the Battle Scribe application to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and check out my channel. I'm going to have way more tutorial content on how to get started playing Warhammer 40k and how to get started playing Warhammer 40k online. So if you want to get your games in, go ahead and hit the link down in the description with the Discord server for Tactical Tortoise. We play 40k all the time over there. We have a new player section so you can go in and put your heads together with other new players and get advice on how to build lists. And we play competitive events constantly for Warhammer 40k. So if you want to rip that bandaid right off and get stuck in, go ahead and join us in the Discord. It's going to be awesome. Really appreciate you watching this video all the way through the end. I really hope it helped. If it did, let me know down in the comments and think about giving the video a like and a subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, you know the drill. And last but not least, big thanks to my patrons over at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. Those people are incredible. They help support me while I do all of these uh, 40k videos and they get some cool stuff in response. Patreon.com slash tactical tortoise and check it out. And as always, remember to keep it classy folks. And you know what? Have happy wargaming too.